Good morning, everyone. My name is Lori Lytle. I'll be hosting Mortgage Coaches Training Thursday. So today what we're going to focus on is a debt consolidation report for a toll company. Oh, you don't see my screen. Thank you. Okay. You should be able to see my screen now. Okay. Um, perfect. So, okay. Um, last week we had worked on a refinance scenario for a total cost analysis, um, just showing how do you work with the reinvestment. This week we've been getting a lot of questions through our support center on debt consolidations on how can you show that. So today that's what we're going to focus on. Uh, you can see here that I have a current mortgage and what we're going to do is increase that dollar amount for a $70,000 payoff um, of credit cards and we'll focus on that. But I'm also showing a refinance with no cash out so they'd be able to do savings and have more money applied to debt if they wanted to control it that way. So what we want to do is let me go into more info and when you go into the more info button what we'll be able to do, but first, let me go ahead and close out. I'm clearing the highlights. You'll see that clear all button at the bottom center of the presentation. That just clears out all your highlights at once. So let's go back into the more info so we can talk a little bit about the um, products we're going to develop, and then we'll go and jump into uh, Mortgage Coach. So with that, we have payment breakdown, and you can see the P&I payment. You can see how it's that increase. Um, for the debt payoff, um, but what we are removing is mortgage insurance and we're also removing the monthly debt. So we're saying that they have about a $500 monthly debt that they pay each month and we're going to be removing that debt by paying off that and um, showing it. So with that, we also have our closing costs want to point out in the debt payoff products that when we go into our fee details, you can see we have a line item called debt payoff. What we're going to do is also show you not only discuss about that debt payoff line item in the fees, also show you how you can itemize that um, debt so you can show the borrowers what you are paying off. So we'll del dive into the fee templates as well, be able to understand the fee templates and how to create um, custom fees. So we'll focus on fees as well. And if we have time, we'll focus on the reinvestment strategy. So we'll be able to show a little bit of information here, especially with the cash out, apply that saving um, money towards savings. So it would be able to show how much money they'd be able to um, gain through that refinance. So with that, what I would like you to do is let's go over a few details and then we're going to go ahead and dive into Edge. What I want to do is when you log into Edge, let's go ahead and go to our home screen. Uh, with that, I want to point out our help button. If you're new to Mortgage Coach and new to Training Thursday, this style of a training is a QA process. So open up your question area in GoToMeeting and for now, just tell me what company you're with and what state. Um, this is a standard question I ask. I just want to be able to know so I'd be able to address some of the questions um, concerning doc stamps as well as being able to provide information on enterprise accounts. So if you let me know your company name. Okay, Countrywide Mortgage. Hey, uh, Stephen. Prime Lending. Okay, got some information there. Alfredo. Welcome, Volk. Hi, Dennis. Uh, Umqua. Hi, Dave. Perfect. So I've got a couple uh, enterprise and a couple single uh, individual users. So that's perfect. So I'll address the um, training in both ways, but definitely keep those questions coming at any point of time. If there's an item you want me to um, go over a second time, please put in the question area and let me just review that information for you. The other item I want to point out is the help button in Edge. When you're um, using that help button, it will direct you to our support center. But what I want to do is point out our other trainings. And so if you're new to a uh, um, mortgage coach, haven't really created um, a presentation, um, just go into the event calendar and we have an introduction to EDGE. So if you're brand new to Mortgage Coach, please uh, attend that introduction to EDGE. It's every Monday at 9 o'clock Pacific time. We just walk through the basics of Mortgage Coach. We also have a university that we hold every month and with that it's 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. Pacific time each week. 
uh, what we, it is, I want to encourage you just to click on that. Click on the curriculum. So not only is it a training you can um, sign up for, but it tells you all the items you could do in Mortgage Coach, all the different types of presentations you could build, as well as our widgets in different settings. So please uh, look at this. gives you a more comfort um, idea of what you can do with Mortgage Coach. And then lastly, um, let's go back. Um, this training and all our uh, trainings and uh, coaching calls are held in our coaching call archive. So if you ever want to review that, just click on that and you'll be able to review any past coaching calls as well as any webinars we have and our training Thursday. So with that, we're done with our housekeeping, so let's go back to EDGE. So um, I would like you to follow along, create this presentation so you can have uh, the key tricks of developing the product. And then, um, again, ask questions along the way. So as you're starting out, you would want to click on New Client. What I'm going to do is review the report I've already created so you'll be able to see the data that's being displayed while I talk about it. So let's go into the Debt Consolidation Report. And what we'll have to do is just go through these screens rather quickly. Um, there's quite a few of you um, that do have the Optimal Blue interface. Just letting you know it's very quick and easy to use and it will bring up the four products um, into your mortgage coach. So just letting you know if you don't know about that, um, please email us at support at mortgage coach and we can get you information. So with that, you can see on the screen for the clients, what I have done is you'll see these two toggles at the top, individual versus marketing. Individual shows the borrower's information, co-borrower. Marketing just provides you a single headline. So since I'm just creating a, um, a training piece, I'm putting it as a marketing. Friendly name field. So with friendly name field, this is a great um, hack to get into. It's your reference name. You always want to put some type of reference name in here because we do have a copy feature. So if you create a presentation, looks good, you want to also show it to someone else, you can copy it real easily. This is where it will identify the differences between presentations. So get in the habit, especially with your open house presentations, want to put the street name in here so that way it's easy to represent, um, find that house for that realtor. A lot of words for a single field. <laughs> Moving on, now we're in the goals. So in the goals, really the only thing you have to um, work on this screen is if you're doing a purchase home, mark it as a purchase. Otherwise, these are data collection fields. I did mark it, pay off debts, and I have $70,000 worth of debt that I'm going to pay off. So with that, let's move on to the next screen, and we're going to start talking about the current mortgage. So with the current mortgage, and this is uh, always more of the difficult area for people to get the information. So a lot of times that's where the issue lies um, in understanding it. So you can put a current monthly pay mortgage payment. You see I left it empty. It's a data collection field. So if the borrower has provided it to you, place it in there by all means. Otherwise, I'm just going to leave it empty. Want to be able to show that property purchase um, price. It has increased, we're at 420, and I have my original appraisal amount here. So now let's go ahead and advance the screen and let's talk about the current mortgage. So you can see um, with the data, so if you're following along, just go ahead and put in 6-1-2014. The original loan amount on this um, home was 320,000. They had a 4.5% interest rate and a term of 360. You'll see that we calculate the remaining balance field, and then the last field on that screen is showing you that P&I payment. You'll notice it's grayed out because it's displayed only. A lot of times you receive the payment amount that the borrower has paid, but they can't remember the original loan amount, not quite sure of the rate. So when you have an unknown, what you would want to do is, if you um, know the payment, you can always adjust your loan amount and the rate to be able to get that payment um, that they provided. When you talk to the borrower and you start getting more information, you can always update these figures with the true figures. So say if I had a P&I payment 
and maybe it was actually six hundred dollars or uh, sixteen hundred. So say I go ahead and put in three hundred and ten, and let's see what that PNI is. So you can see how it decreased the payment amount. I'm keeping that rate the same and the term the same. So you can see how you can modify the figures to be able to get the correct P&I payment. What I want to do before we move on, let's go look at the mortgage real quick because if you're concerned that the loan amount, um, you know, not having the correct loan amount displaying, because really you're not sure, let's take a look at the presentation. You'll see the loan amount field on the current mortgage, it's showing the outstanding balance at that point in time. So that's the reason why you can play with that loan amount to get that payment amount. So want to be able to show the connection between the two. So now let's go back into your edge account. And let's go ahead and put back our loan amount of 320. There we go. So if you have any questions on the current mortgage, on filling out this data, please go ahead and put it in the question area. I can come back and answer any questions. Before we move off the page, let me explain one more field. You'll see that we have a remaining balance here. And we automatically calculate it based on the date, the loan amount, interest rate, term, and then we provide the remaining balance. It doesn't include if they prepaid any amounts, this is just straight, strictly with the data provided. You can always override this figure if they have paid off and they say, oh, we only have a remaining balance of 300000 That's fine. You can always go ahead and place in that dollar amount here. And this will be the figure that would carry over to your products. So again, if they paid off a remaining balance, you can always override that with the true figure, and that's the number we'll carry forward. Also want to point out one other field. I'm going to go back one screen, and let's talk about this current total payoff. And the reason why I'm focusing on these two fields is we get this question quite a bit in support where the cash to close isn't calculating correctly. A lot of times what people will do is put a current um, total payoff amount here. And what they're doing is um, knowing that the loan isn't going to fund for a couple months and they're putting in the true amount at that point. Well, we will always use this figure here to calculate our cash to close. So if you put a figure here, this is our cash to close and we ignore the remaining balance field. So for just to, let me go ahead and reset this real quick. I'm just go ahead and put in my four and a half again. So unless you have a payoff amount that you want differently, leave this figure empty. Don't place any number in here. Just let it be whatever that remaining balance is. So that's how those two fields connect. And again, if you have a question on that, want me to go through it a little bit more, let me know because that is a question we see a lot in our support. Okay, now let's move on to the monthly cost frame. So in the monthly cost, this is where we're going to place in that monthly debt. This is the way, this is our workaround to be able to show how they're paying off that debt and not have to have it as a monthly amount. So you can see I went ahead and had my ha hazard and property tax in here. And you see this extra field. This is what I, you can override this and then place in your description. Also, if you live in areas that have additional monthly costs, like maybe wind insurance or something of that sort, you can always put that monthly amount here and place that descriptor and the dollar amount. So that's what that field is for, an additional monthly cost, which in this um, training we're going to use monthly debt. So they have um, going to be paying off their monthly debt of $500 a month. So when we move to our products, we will remove this $500 because we're increasing the loan amount and it removed this monthly debt. So again, in our current mortgage, we went ahead and added our monthly debt of $500. When we get to our new products, we'll remove that $500 because we'll be paying it off. Okay? And now as we move on, before I do, let me move back one screen. The very last field on that I want to point out 
We do have it where you can do a second lien if they do have it. If you answer yes, you can see how now it asks information for the second lien. So if you do have that, we do have the option to either um, pay it off or keep that as subordinate financing. So we do have the option for both. So that's where you key in your second lien. Now let's move on. And as I do, let me point out in the lower um, right-hand corner that you can place notes in this section. These notes do not are not borrower-facing. You only see them. So as you advance your screens, you can see how those notes carry with you. So you have a little sticky pad right there to place any kind of notes. And now that we're going through here is you can see how I have placed my non-mortgage debt as well as my monthly debt here. You can use the savings um, balance. In this particular case, I'm not focusing on these areas, so I'm just going to go ahead and leave them empty and move on. Because a lot of the fields when you create a presentation, just like this screen, they're not needed. They're for um, gathering information. And when I want to create a uh, report quickly, I just bypass those uh, fields. So now we're getting to our product. So with our product, this will be our um, debt payoff amount. So with that, what you want to do is play, first place in your title. And your title needs to be um, 12 characters or less. So keep that in mind when you're naming it. And when you bring files over from Optimal Blue or other APIs, those uh, titles will need to be modified because they're quite long when they carry over because they're from secondary. So always make sure, even with an API, you come in and make sure your characters are 12 um, characters or less your title here. Now what you want to do is you'll see that it's marked no. Mark it yes, and you'll see that your labels changed right here, and your data um, went ahead and carried over. You'll notice that the base loan amount will be 300, or if you're following my data, it would be 310 roughly. And what it's doing is um, carrying over that outstanding balance. So with that, I went ahead and increased my loan amount to 400,000. What I'm going to do with this is have um, 70000 I'm paying off, and I'm also going to go ahead and have a little bit of cash to close so I could do a little bit of fixing up around the house. So my increased value has now um, increased so I could use this cash out, which I haven't been able to do before. Um, so a lot of people are in that position right now. So with that, remember, so mark it yes. And now to increase the value. I go ahead and override that outstanding balance and place in that new loan amount. So I'm going to go ahead and have 400,000 as well, not 40, but 400. There we go. Um, thousand is my loan amount. So you can see how very simple it is. Just increase that base loan amount to the loan amount that they want um, to have. So for their cash out. My interest rate I can get for them is 4% and I have a term of 360. So now what we want to do is move into our fees. And we're in the fees, what we're going to do is go ahead and focus on adding fees, adding custom fees for that debt payoff. So with that, um, prepaid interest, go ahead and put in the number of days you want to estimate. I notice people are going to the lower end, more like uh, five days or less. But I put it just an estimate of 15. Now let's check out our closing cost details. So some of you do have fee templates um, built. Uh, I know Prime, Uncle, you have some basic fee templates. Um, Walk and Bulk, I'm not quite sure. I think you have some branch. But basically with that, what you can always do with what has been provided, open up your templates and choose it and then carry it down. Even if those fees are not exact, you can use it as a model. So if your corporate has provided you a fee template, bring it down, and this is what you'll do to create your own custom template. So say if you had a fee template and it carries down, but your office actually charges $475 for your appraisal instead of $450, you would just go ahead and override that amount. Say another fee um, you didn't... Um, your office doesn't do. You could remove it with the trash can. So you can see how you can modify the dollar amounts 
remove, or even add a fee. And once you're done modifying the template to fit your fees, go ahead and always remember to save it as a template in that lower right-hand corner. You could rename it, and you might put some kind of uh, reference so it's your office, so you'll know, because it will be part of that list, and you're going to get your corporate as well as your individual. So let's just go ahead and show you. I'm just putting an asterisk, so this way it will always be on top of the list. And I'm just going to say fee template. If you originate into multiple states, you could go ahead and identify um, what uh, fee template is there. So once you press OK, you'll notice you'll build a fee template, and it is in that list. And when you log back out and they resort, that asterisk will be at the top. I have a question, so just one moment. Um, yes, uh, uh, it is, uh, Alfredo, a little bit high. He's saying my 400000 versus a 410 value uh, for a cash out. My numbers might uh, be off in that aspect, and it's just more or less to show you how that presentation works. So sorry, Alfredo. Thank you for pointing that out, though. Um, this is more of, of a, a training and physical parts. So um, I noticed that right beforehand. I was going to actually bump it, and I didn't. So thank you. Um, another thing, um, so that's how you'd be able to put a feed template and develop a feed template there. So with this, what I want to do is place this back to 450 so I match my other feed template. And let's focus on how you could put in that debt um, payoff. So you can see I have a line item here labeled debt payoff, and I put in that 70000 With that, you also want to make sure you have it marked in the PPE column, prepaid escrow. And the reason for that, this isn't a cost to the loan. You do not want to include it in your short-term area on the presentation, which is your unrecoverable costs. And you don't want it part of that TIP percentage or the five-year cost for TIP. Again, because it's not a cost of the loan, it's just paying off debt. So that's what this column represents. And the other item I have done with my fees is also added them all to the loan amount, and you have a button right here that will do it to, um, for you all at once. But when you do do that, just want to remind you, make sure you remove that debt payoff so it's not added to the loan amount. That was my error earlier. So now I have it as a lump sum. A lot of times, you know, possibly they don't qualify for this um, amount of loan. You could show them um, the itemized amounts, and then you could also remove them. So say what you could do is let's remove this debt payoff line item here. And what we're going to do is work with add custom fee. So when I add custom fee, you could go ahead and put any type of information in here. So say you um, they have a car loan. They could go ahead and put in the description of that. And you can also then have an automatically marked default prepaid, which will mark it as a prepaid escrow item. Again, removing it from the cost. Once you press OK, you have that car loan amount here. And then let's say that uh, outstanding balance was $25,000. And you see how I have it marked prepaid escrow. So you can see how you can go ahead and itemize them in those um, areas. So, um, so say they have credit card one, market prepaid escrow. And what I you can label this whatever you want. I try to make it more generic in the sense of if you are doing quite a few of these uh, debt consolidations, you could reuse these descriptions. So that's why I'm labeling it as credit card one, but if you want to, you know, Place the name of the card, you can actually put that as your descriptor too. So I put credit card one, and let's say I have 15000 on that. Whoops, don't want to do that. Let's say we have some student loans. Those are always fun. Prepaid debt. Okay. Student loans. Let's say that was 20. I have five more thousand, right? 
<laughs> so, whoops, I did that again. Um, add custom fee, and I'm going to say credit card number two, market prepaid escrow, and then put the remaining. Just to be able to give you an idea how you could go ahead and break that down. That 70000 you could do it as a lump sum where we have a description that you created as a custom field and just say debt payoff, or you can itemize those figures like I have done. So let's see if I'm sorry. I think this is 10,000. Okay, there we go. So with that, you can see how you have it. So this way, if you have a line item, it comes back and possibly they can't get that full amount of money that they're uh, receiving. You could say, okay, let's go ahead and remove um, credit card number two. So you can see the dollar amounts. The borrower can also get the idea of what they're paying off. So this is how you can show up more of a clear picture um, to that borrower. So with that, once you're done modifying, you just go ahead and apply to loan. And you'll see how it totals all those figures, including the taxes and reserves, and that's your prepaid escrow amount. Moving on to our monthly costs, you can see I put in my monthly cost. I removed that monthly debt because I paid off that debt and I no longer have any mortgage insurance, which I actually should. So let's go ahead and put some on. So my uh, savings is going to change a little bit on my report. So let's go ahead and put in 0.69, 78% cutoff. So now let's see how that changes um, our report. So moving on, you can see no cash out now. So with that, let's go ahead and you can see a base loan amount. When you change it from no to yes, this is how it displays. So you can see how that outstanding balance, let's just show you. If I say no and I say yes, that dollar amount will update for you. So we'll carry everything over. You can also do a copy from, copy from the debt payoff so you can get your fees and then you would have to delete those um, payoffs. So there's a couple different ways of you being able to copy. It depends on what type of uh, work you want to do. And this is actually quite simple. So put in your label, no cash out, outstanding balance, move to the next screen, put in your prepaid interest. And the one item I didn't cover is I added it to a loan amount. If you wanted to do so, you would just put it in that box here. Closing cost details, you would find that product template, apply it, and you see I have no payoffs in my template. Have it all added to loan amount, apply to loan, and then you have your monthly costs. Let's go ahead, just like the other one, let's go ahead and put in MI. Whoa, I forgot my decimal. There we go. So with that, so you can add other products, but we'll just focus on these two. Actually, with this one, I wouldn't have in my, my LTV is um, quite a bit lower. So with that, let's go ahead and move on. And we're going to come back and talk about our goals in this area here. So with that first, what I want to do is also show you, you can show total interest in MI. If you're using that reinvestment matrix, you um, want to show the total net worth. We also have the option to show the total principal paid. So you have both options, um, those three options you can show on a report. So moving on, you have your contact details if you want to fill that information in. And then the next screen is allowing you to um, remove products. So say if you didn't want to show a product at first, if you uncheck it, it does not display. If you check it, it displays. And we'll show you that when we come to the presentation. Always remember to put in payment notes. Payment notes, you just want to put in something simple as estimated taxes and insurance are included in your payment. Something simple that you would want to be able to have in this area um, to display. So, good compliance note. Next item I just want to do is you go through the next screens. They're just review or you can hover your mouse and go directly to preview. We're in the last of our screen. And now let's go ahead and you would want to put in a quote date by just clicking on the calendar. You always want to email the link, even if you're going to print it or save it as a PDF, do it through the link. Um, 
you'll have more success and also the link is the piece that should be um, sent to the board. And now let's preview our report. So with that, what we're going to do is talk a little bit about the report and then we're also going to go ahead and um, bring over the, over the mobile and show you how to use the mobile and use Edge Live through the desktop as well as the mobile. So that's what the uh, second part of the uh, call will focus more on as well as video. So now with that, let's take a look at our uh, figures. So you can see how the interest rate, and for those of you who haven't highlighted, all I'm doing is putting my mouse over that field and I'm left clicking. So that's what I, how I could do that. You can see the difference in the payments here. You can also see the cash out. So with that, I want to point out too, you have your payment street buttons here. It does show you that you have MI and then you can see that the other one does not. So just to be able to show you where you can see those figures. And now let's go discuss that more info button. So actually, let's bring the phone over so you can also see how it um, moves with the mobile. Okay, let's bring that over. And then we'll dive directly more into the mobile. Okay, there we go. Okay. So what I'm going to do is go into the more info button. And it'll be interesting when we go to the short term and be able to talk about that. So you can see that the P&I payments, how they're increased on that cash out one. You also see that monthly um, amounts and that monthly debt, mortgage insurance. Mortgage insurance went down a little bit, not much, but you have none on the strictly no cash out. So there's your data here that you'll be able to find. Now let's check out our closing costs. So with our closing costs, if you click on that fee detail, you'll be able to see all the different items. So here's your car loan, the credit card, credit card two, and as well as our student loan. You'll notice that all the fees are in alpha order that is um, due to TRID. So no matter how you display it when you're creating, we will always then put it in alpha order. So with that, it's supposed to be easy for the borrower to be able to identify those fees and be able to find them rather quickly. So that you'll see that all the items that are financed into loans, so you'll be able to pull, um, show that to the borrower too, how it's being added into the loan amount and financed that way. So now we can see that this loan amount is um, saving the borrower 226 and 904. You know what, Alfredo, I, I know we have, um, with GoToMeeting and the reflector we use with the mobile, a lot of times it does do, um, it is a little slow. I wasn't watching it when I was doing it, so let me uh, watch a little bit more. Uh, we have like three different, hmm? yes, it should, uh, Alfredo, every time I highlight, it should go ahead and move to that screen. So, and working on those details. So with that, you can see the last item I had highlighted, was, whoops, it was going over here. So it just picked up my um, 904 that I highlighted. If I highlighted the other graph, it will go ahead and switch the highlighting to the other graph. It's a little bit delayed again because, okay, perfect, because of that. But you can see how it also drives. And wait to, um, when we go in, it also drives the desktop version. So either way, if the borrower opens it on the mobile or if they, mo or if they open it on the desktop. And yes, I'll go ahead and discuss the uh, tip percentage in just a moment, Tom. So with that, let's go ahead in our monthly savings area. Just wanted to point out, if you have second lien information, that would appear below here, just want to point out. But you have your basic information. You can see how the MI is being removed out of the no cash out. And now let's check out that savings of over 60 months and let's see why it's negative. So you can see how the interest in MI how much that is. So you can see how it's increased quite a bit for that second lien. You also, or not second lien, that debt payoff because we increased that loan amount so much. You also have your fees and then once you add those together, that is your cost. 
So we increased this um, quite a bit for the loan amount. One of it is because I wanted to show quite a few itemized uh, fees, things like that. Um, figures will probably be more true uh, with your loans. But with that, you can see how the high amount of interest in MI versus the other products and then adding the fees. So this is the true cost of the loan. We then do a comparison and you can see how because of that increase in the loan amount, how much more cost uh, it is for that second product, but how much savings they have on just a straight refinance. So with that, um, I was trying to think a couple ways of explaining tips. So with the first lien tip, tip is the total interest paid. So this is the total interest paid over the life of the loan. So in this case, 30 years. And it's the percentage over the loan amount. So if you take that interest amount for um, the 30 years divided into loan amount, that is your percentage. Another way of um, looking at it, we are going to be splitting out our figures here, the interest in MI. So you have a line item of interest and then a line item of MI. If you change this figure here to 60, you would then be able to have the full interest amount. So that is coming, so we'll have that split. Um, so you'll be able to really understand that a little bit more. But again, it's the full interest of the life of the loan, and that's all. It's the interest and for the 30-year period. So if you use the reinvestment matrix in our system and where you're paying down principal, because if you pay down principal, you're paying less interest, and this percentage will also decrease. So, Tom, if you need a little bit more explanation on that, let me know. Um, Jason, I believe what you're asking, if you could um, show the true cost of debt in the aspect of the interest rate of um, those accounts, and unfortunately, this is our workaround because they do have a different um, interest calc. So in this particular case, it's just being added in. So it's not really showing that full interest that they're paying in that negative amount. So if that didn't answer your question, Jason, go ahead and um, uh, put it back in that question area. Okay. So now what the five-year cost, we talked about the tip and the five-year cost is the principal amount your interest at MI and your closing costs when you add those three together that is what that five-year lien cost is also if you have a contribution in your closing cost that does not offset the fees for that five-year cost due to the regulation they want to be able to show the true cost, not cost with um, contributions applied to it. So we always add that fee. So if you add those three line items, and again, when you we split out that interest in MI, you could really explain it in a little bit more detail. But basically, you add those three items up, and that will be your uh, five-year cost. So that's tip as well as your five-year um, cost. So that helps that borrower as well as you get more familiar or easier to explain on that loan estimate. So if you have any, any questions, additional questions on those tips, let me know. Want to point out in the lower right-hand area, you have a share button. This is a quick way of grabbing that link. So if you email a question to us at support, always send us that link because it helps us to view your presentation. So what I'm going to do is also go a little bit more into Edge Live and then we're going to move on to the mobile. What I'm doing is um, pasting the link and this is just as if a borrower clicked on that link from your email. This is what they receive. They would click I understand and now view your presentation also see that video. You'll notice at the very bottom there's no clear all button. So the borrower cannot clear out highlights, they cannot physically highlight themselves, and they cannot change data. So this is a very um, unique uh, presentation just for the borrower. And now what I want to do is just point out when you do side by side, not only can you drive the presentation um, on the mobile, 
you could drive it on the desktop. So you can see on the left hand side, ah, reinvestment. You have the clear all button. Right hand side, you do not. I'm also going to go ahead and place this link in the chat area. So if you want to go ahead and open that link, you could go ahead and do so. And I drive the presentation on your screen. So you can see if I click on the no cash out product, I click on the title, it, it will highlight the whole column for me. And then if I go ahead and click on an individual field, you can see how I'm not only driving the desktop over here, I'm also driving the mobile device. There is a little delay right now just because of um, the GoToMeeting. But you can see how we're in the summary area, and we're in the summary area here. And then if I click on the More Info button, it will also drive the payment breakdown. So now let's go ahead and show you how you can drive the presentation on the mobile device. And then um, Jim will go ahead and um, dive into the reinvestment strategy, and I'll show you how you put that monthly savings into the reinvestment. So now with the mobile, let's go ahead and I'm going to change it a little bit. If you have not downloaded your, um, the Mortgage Coach app, just go to your app store and search for Mortgage Coach and you have two apps. You have our Rate Watch app as well as our um, Mortgage Coach uh, app, which is a viewer. You also access your account with this one. So not only do, when you click on the link, it will show the link here. If you click on the arrow, it opens up the presentation. And the history button will show you all the presentations you have viewed for all your different borrowers. So you'll see that. Now what I want to point out is the silhouette in the upper left-hand corner. This is where you log into your Mortgage Coach app. So when you go in there, you see how you could just log in and signing in. It's the same login as you log into Mortgage Coach as well as Rate Watch. And before we dive into the client's area, I want to point out the silhouette in the upper right-hand corner. This is where you turn on um, the button to upload videos, um, pre-recorded videos. So you'll see when you go into settings, you have an option to prompt for album videos. We encourage you not to put a pre-recorded video the first time you send it to the borrower. Reason for it, you want to have a brand new video out there to be able to reintroduce yourself and talk specifically to that borrower. But this is great for follow-ups. So now let's move back um, and let's take a look at the presentation through the mobile. So you can see I had one report and I have nine views. So with those nine views, it means I've opened and closed my presentation nine times, or the borrower has. Someone has done that. So now let's take a look. If I go into Clients, you can see all the different presentations. And now what I want to do is on the left-hand side of my screen, I'm going to open up my Edge account. So you can go to my home screen. You can also see that what's being displayed is also what's displayed in your home screen here. So you can see Debt Consult and My Comparison is, follows that same flow. You also have a search button, just as you do with the View All. That's your search capabilities to find a presentation that's not being displayed. So let's go ahead and tap on Debt Consolidation. So with that, we go ahead and go into the Total Cost Analysis. And these are the options you have. You could go ahead and um, create a video, view the presentation, or do Edge Live, where you tap on the mobile and drive the presentation. So first, let's check out the video, and then we'll go into live reporting, and then let's touch base in the reinvestment strategy. So that's where we're going to end the call. So first off, let's go back into it. Video. So to record a video through your mobile, um, and this is a great way to send really quick updates to your borrower, this, if you have marked the albums, you could go ahead and choose your album, or let's just go into an Edge video. And you're going to get comfortable more. Hi, everyone. I'm Lori. Uh, so with that, you could go ahead and um, record your video. If it's unsteady, that's what I get a lot of people on the first time. They don't want to use the mobile. 
Um, there's also stands you can place the mobile on as well as a walking stick, so you have those options. So with that, you also have that tapping on that corner right there, and you could go ahead and also do presentations if you're walking through an open house. So you can also do that. And I could show you this uh, one presentation, um, and you can see how you could just hit recording, and you could go ahead and continue on. So um, with that, um, again, and once you do a little recording, I want to do it because I want to point out something. So if you record your message and then press stop, this is where you want to go ahead and attach it. So you have played, say, video, so you could go ahead and you know listen to it once you have the video the way you like it, upload your saved video. If you have want to replace a video, you have record new video. So these are the three buttons. Once you've recorded it, it will come back. If you're at an open house and have a video on your um, open house presentations, you can loop that video. We've also seen people uh, have gone to um, on-site events and on their TV they have a mortgage coach presentation looping. So it's pretty cool to see. So uh, that's the information on how to be able to record a video. Now let's show you how you can uh, drive the presentation. So if I go into the deck consolidation my file, touch on total cost analysis, and now let's go into live reporting. So with live reporting, whoops, I got big fingers, just one moment. There we go. So with that, all I'm going to do is touch my um, mobile. I'm going into the summary. And let's move this over a little bit so you can be able to see. And now let's go ahead and just tap on some of the fields. And it will go ahead and drive the presentation. So let's go ahead and go, there it goes, a little delay there. And it did go into the closing cost and it highlighted my fields here. And all I'm doing is just tapping on my mobile in the different areas. I can also, you'll see that upper right hand corner, quick way of clearing all your highlights. And if you wanted to go into the monthly savings, you can always touch the graphs as well. And you can see how it will highlight. Again, you're driving that presentation to be able to provide that information to the borrower really easily. So they don't have to just rely on your audio. Finding this information, you can drive it. Okay, so with that, Let's go ahead and bring our mobile off to the side and we'll discuss reinvestment strategy. And um, it wouldn't be so much the people driving the presentation on the mobile, but the loan officer itself. And the reason why is if you're out of the office, you don't have your laptop, you want to talk to your client, you're in a coffee shop, whatever it may be. This is the way you could continue talking with your borrower on your mobile device and pointing out different items. Currently, we don't have it where you can make data modifications, saying if they updated maybe a loan amount, adding a different product. We can't do that on the mobile, but that is coming. So definitely get familiar because there's going to be more power behind that silhouette. So not only record video, you can drive the presentation for the borrower, you'll also be able to make those edits and not have to go into the laptop. So, so with that, what I'm going to do is to show you how you can make updates, um, I'm going to go ahead and talk about the reinvestment strategy screen. And you'll see how the borrower's copy on my right-hand side is then going to make um, show those changes. Um, if you click on a presentation to drive the live reporting, because it's your presentation, the video will not show. The video will go ahead and play over here. So if I, um, in a sense, I'm in my file here. If I went into generate link, you also have that edge live button. Edge live also is the same as that preview link here. But when you click on it, it's just going to bring up that presentation for you to view right now. If um, you wanted to rehear the video, it would be a button over here and you can go ahead oh, um, over on this side and you can listen to it. So the loan officer copy, the video doesn't automatically when you press Edge Live or that it will not come up. That's only uh, automatic on the borrower's copy. 
Okay, now let's talk about reinvestment. So the reinvestment is in the analysis screen. So if I click on analysis, and let's re, uh, go to adjust reinvestment strategy. Because I think I have my data all over the place with these products. Let's just describe how you can reinvest the savings. So there's a couple different ways. You can reinvest it toward principal, savings, or an investment account. So I have $900 roughly. Remember, that's including my $500 debt. So um, with that, say we can apply 500 to our principal. You can see how it reduces that um, freedom point, how long it takes to uh, pay off that loan. And we only count for 400. So let's say they have an investment account at 3%. Let's put in the remaining 400 down here. So you can show how much it can accumulate over that 15 year period on how much money. So let me just show you how this looks on the presentation and we'll come back and talk a little more on the reinvestment. So anytime you make modifications, you always have to advance your screen left or right or just move to a different screen. That makes this change and you'll notice we I missed it just there. Whoops, let's bring over the other presentation so I can highlight it. You can see how the presentation updated and now has that reinvestment um, payment. So you can see that dollar amount right there. And then if you go into the more info button in, in that reinvestment, you can really dive into and show the areas. And again, you can highlight within that screen. So you could show them, have it highlighted before it goes out and show them what you've done. So that's one way of just at least place that money in for reinvestment. But we also have the capability of reinvesting mortgage insurance as well as lump sum payments. So now let's go back into EDGE and let's go into that reinvestment strategy. If you have lump sum payments, so say they know they were getting money, you know, in a year. If they were selling their house, you know, if they were doing a purchase and they had a bridge loan, you can always say, okay, month 12, we're going to apply an additional 100000 to the loan. This is how you would do it. I just pressed add, put in what month, and how much. Now, you would also have to add another line item the following month and zero out that amount. Because otherwise, if you did not, every month it would apply 100000 So that's how you do lump sums. So let's remove these line items and let's show you how to reinvest mortgage insurance. So you'll see at the base of the screen here, my MI will cut off at month 13 and my last um, mortgage insurance payment I made was $233. We always say last MI payment, FHA, this number declines so it's always changing. So that's the reason last month, let's go in here let's say month 13, because this is the month, no longer has MI, and then you go ahead and place that dollar amount here. So from month 13 forward, it will go ahead and apply that amount to our principal. So let's take a look at the presentation and see what that does. I'm going to press add, whoops, not add, let's delete that one, <laughs> press OK. You'll see now I have a block custom new freedom point, let's press OK, advance my screen so I can apply it to the loan. Ha <laughs> ha Tom, <laughs> by weekly payments, uh, we do have a workaround, it's not straightforward, but if you email us at support, we can give you that information. Um, okay, so let's take a look at that um, reinvestment. So if I click on more info, you can see I now have a custom button. If I click on that, you could see how I reinvested the mortgage insurance. Okay, with that, um, let's just go back, see if I covered everything in reinvestment. One more thing to cover, and we're done for the day. Okay, so with the reinvestment, remember you have not only principal you can apply to, an investment account to apply to, 
if they already have money, once you start talking to the borrower, you can always update this data because your link always gets updated. You don't have to send them a new link. You don't have to send them new papers. And that's the beauty with Mortgage Coach because this way when you're talking to them and you have to go and print those new fee sheets or whatever you have to keep sending them, your link's overridden. You only have to send it once and they always have access. So with that, if you find out they had an investment account and a balance, you could go ahead and add that amount, 3% and 400. If you look at our last week's call, I discussed further how you can go ahead and mark, take this amount and let me know how soon as I can pay off that loan. So we do have um, ways of um, payment accumulation and applying it toward principal. Um, last week's call, we dived into that more. Last thing on this screen I want to point out is break even point. So with your goals, you can always go into long term if you wanted to show that tip percentage. See on the presentation in the lower right hand corner. If you change that to 30 years, you would have some information in there showing um, the 30 year mark for your interest. Let's put that back at 15 and now let's play with that short term months. So with the short-term months, you'll be able to find break-even point. So you can see with the debt, it, let me just advance the screen, something's going on. So with that, you can always bring it down and find out exactly where they break even with the costs. So you can do it month 12, month 65. You can see how the current mortgage is still as a savings even at month 84 but you got to remember we're comparing against a debt payoff and you know our loan amount has increased so but when you're working with a straight refinance this is a great way of working the numbers and to be able to see uh, where the break-even point is and you can point it out to the borrower as you're talking so you can see how the numbers change and you'll be able to provide them that kind of information so that's break even point. So with that, I am wrapping up today's call. Um, I will stay on if you have a few questions that need answering, I will answer them. But remember, please go to our support center, go um, find out what type of trainings we have. Remember, just press the help button in Edge. It takes you to our support center, calendar of events, sign up for um, our coaching calls. Um, Mobile Wednesday, if you want more information on how to use your mobile device with the borrowers, so that's great with um, Edge Live. So that is every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Oh yes, Dennis, to delete a client, um, I believe you do not have the capabilities. <laughs> um, let's see, if you do, click on View All. This is how you search, you can always narrow down your search, but I'm just gonna go ahead and open everything up. If you do have the capabilities of a delete, this is where the button would be. So if I open up my file through these arrows, this is the friendly name field, that word template. We always put the date and time it was last accessed. We provide the data on the right hand side. And if you have the delete capability, it would be here. Um, yeah, I'm quite, I think, uh, no, Wallach and Bulk, I think you might have that still. So um, if not, it means your company removed that button for you and they want to keep all the um, presentations um, for auditing purposes possibly. So that's how you would delete. Um, we don't have a uh, phone service for um, uh, support, but you can email us with your question. Your mobile device does not show anything like yours. You know, let me bring up my mobile device real quick. You might have a different app. You might have Nest maybe. Let's see. So, just a moment, let's bring this back over. Open up. So with that, what I'm going to do is go out to my home screen. And I'm going to my Play Store right here. So once you go to your App Store, your Play Store, this is where you want to search for Mortgage Coach. And with that, let's just go ahead and put in Mortgage Coach real quick. And there's a couple different apps, and I'll show you the app that I'm using. But make sure you um, download uh, Rate Watch as well. 
So we have the Mortgage Coach app. This is the one we're working on. And then, uh, so rewatch. here's our Rewatch app. So for Mortgage Coach, and there's one more that's Nest. It might be the same. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, so that's what definitely, um, if you're not seeing that, Tom, definitely email us at support. Another thing, too, is on all our presentations, if you don't see um, what it looks like, either if you could do a screenshot, but you do have a share button. I know you'll never get to it if it's not the app, but you can always share your presentations um, through the share button right here, and you can email and text anybody those um, presentations. So I want to point that out, either through a quick email or you could text, whichever way you want to do it. Okay, great. So um, Tom has the same app. Huh. Um, no, Alfredo, you should be able to um, edit the borrower's names if you brought it down from Optimal Blue. We don't have any locks on our screen, so that's quite interesting. Yeah, because with Optimal, yeah, because yeah, with Optimal Blue, um, you definitely want to carry the product, so you were successful in getting that file over. Um, so then, what you would do is just go in and modify those titles as fees and um, monthly costs. Um, support is support at mortgagecoach.com. And I also want to point out when you go into the help button, not only do we have all the different areas, we have quick references in the top area, suggested playlists and scripts, so we have a lot of training um, in sales scripting, and feature walkthroughs as well as our uh, search engine. So if you had a question on reinvestment, and do a search, we provide all our video tutorials or frequently asked questions surrounding that. But we also, if you'll notice further down, we have different categories of different types of um, support knowledge. Also, if you log into Mortgage Coach, um, you have access to these accounts. You can quite, um, do direct emails. We also have suggest new features or release notes. Anytime we do any releases, we'll put it here, or even asking your peers. So um, you can go in and log into your account and develop an account and be part of that mortgage code support. So um, otherwise, just email us at support at mortgagecoach.com and we'll assist you there. Okay, and if there's any other questions, just have a, um, I'll just hang on for another minute or so. And if there's any other questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Oh, that's great. I'm glad you're using it, Stefan. Or Steven, excuse me. So yeah, the app seems to be, uh, it works really well. I'm curious, do you have an Apple or do you have an Android? Apple, yes. Um, believe it or not, the majority of the people that downloaded our app um, have the um, Apple the iOS device. Also, um, you could not only download on your phone, if you have an iPad or a tablet, you can use um, that device as well. So that way, also, if you have open house presentations, you can um, do a loop on the video and have it set out. Oh, OK. Um, I think I know what your question. Let's go ahead, for those who haven't seen the OB, let me go ahead and show the whole bit. So when I'm over, uh, let me just log into my Optimal Blue account, and just let me show you real quick. Because I think what you have to do is um, log into your Edge account. So I think that's the piece you're missing. Oops. And if not, what I'll do is go into my account where I, I don't know why the, I don't know where they do. Well, you just got in. There we go. Okay. And in my account, I have a test account for Optimum Blue. Oh, let me get in. They've been changing our passwords. Oh, there we go. So it's very simple. With the Optimal Blue, um, and this is through Enterprise Accounts. 
you know, it's very familiar if you uh, work with Optimal Blue. But this is the screen. You'll once you submit it, you um, then get your items for um, to pick. So I'm just picking a couple different products, and I'm randomly picking. I don't even know what I picked. So clicking on Mortgage Coach, and then and I'm in a I'm in in a different account. And I think this is where it is. Alfredo, a, a presentation then displays. Now what you need to do is log into your Edge account. And with that, um, let me log into my different account. This is my Optimal Blue account. Um, and you'll see that the file will just carry over. And this is where you have to go in and do an edit. The presentation you receive, um, that link, that link is what you end up sending the borrower. So these are the files, like this sample Georgia. This came down from Optimal Blue. So when you would open it up, um, this is to modify the borrowers, but you can see those product titles, they're, they're insanely huge. So you would want to come into your product and just go ahead and strip down, um, you know, items you don't need, you know, and just end up making a something a little smaller. So that's what you would need to do, but you can see how all the data carried over and what's great with that, it also brings down all the ARM information, including ceiling and floor, so it's great pass through. I have fees because our account has fees built in it. If your account does not, it's something to ask your um, company about. They do have the option to develop it. No, the, you would have to change it in this screen for the borrower's name. Are you talking about the borrower's name, Alfredo? Because this is where you should be able to modify the title, I mean the name. Okay, you know what, you did give me the link. Let me take a look at it after uh, the call. Let me take a look and um, I can go into your account and take a look. Okay? And let, oh, I'll see what it's up, so I'll contact you. Okay, if there's any other questions, I'll go ahead. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and wrap the call. Please just go ahead and email us at support with any questions, and we'll be able to help you out. And I will uh, touch base with you afterwards um, a little bit later in the morning, Alfredo, after I take a look at the report. Thank you, everyone. If there's a scenario you want to see um, built next Thursday, then just email us at support. Um, we're always looking for ideas. Otherwise, we look through our tickets and um, answer those uh, type of products on this call. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful day, and let us know how you can, uh, we can help you with Mortgage Coach.